Nice title, Mike. I think it's pretty accurate, you know? Playing games that you <laughs> don't guys, like. Gonna kill him. Pretty accurate. I think what a lot of people don't take into account when it comes to um, Mixer's growth is the fact that they essentially started from nothing, right? There's, there's no... There's nothing to grab a hold of to help them, right? You could take YouTube, you could take Facebook as an example. They have metrics and stuff that can carry over very, very easily. Mixer truly is starting from nothing. If you and Ninja were to leave, it would be done? No, I disagree. I, I disagree with that because like, it was doing fine without us. We helped a little bit, but it was still doing fine. You know what I mean? You probably can't answer this, but do you think there's anything big coming? Well, if I knew, I wouldn't tell you, but I actually don't know. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't know. The thing is, unfortunately so, um, we had a lot of plans, like me and Microsoft and Mixer, we had a lot of plans to do very, very cool advertising. And then Corona started to happen and then started to, you know, we're, we're starting to take precautions there. And all of those opportunities and all of those things that we were going to do no longer exist. So imagine having like a two year plan, okay? And it involves a lot of in-person act activities, right? And you put all your resources into planning and scheduling and booking and whatever. And then that whole two-year plan's gone. Now, they have to sit back and be like, oh shit. Like, what do we do now? You know? Now they have to completely go back through the whole thing and try to, try to figure it out, you know? I mean, it's not just them that has to figure that out. It's, it's all, all, like, everyone, but you know what I mean? Were you involved with Microsoft's E3 plans? I had I had stuff planned for E3. Yeah, we we were gonna do some. Um, we were gonna do a video of me being on the E3 floor, where they test all the games and everyone can line up and play all the games or early access. Basically, the plan was to the bl the plan was to be on the E3 sh uh, show floor and play all the games. Are you fucking? Uh, anyway. The plan was to be on the E3 floor before it opens to the public and play through and record every single popular game or every single game that I liked. And we we're going to turn that into a video or two. Well, I'll be honest, if I want to watch a small if I want to watch a smaller game like Rainbow Six, there's not a lot of good skilled streamers out there I have to go watch on Twitch. Well, that makes sense. Twitch has been around for longer, therefore there's going to be more people there. So like I don't th so a lot of people don't think of the long the long con. They don't think of the long play. They just think of short-term play, right? So, if you take Twitch and Mixer, right? Of course, Twitch right now is doing so good and continuing to do good because they have something, right? People who have started on Twitch Six years ago, uh, five years ago, three years ago. If they started that long ago, they probably have a pretty f good foundation there, right? So that means w why, would they, why would they go anywhere else? They just wouldn't, right? So fast forward three, four, five years, the people that are going to be the up-and-comers, the new guys, those are going to be the people that are going to be on Mixer in the future, right? That's, that's the long... That's, in theory, that's the long con. That's the long play. Because oversaturation is definitely real, right? So if you're somebody that wants to start live streaming, why would you do it somewhere that's oversaturated? You know, you'd go, you'd go somewhere where you think you have more success or somewhere that you like better, right? That's kind of what Mixer's trying to be. That's, they're trying to be that haven for those people. The, the the new the new people it sounds so weird that that goes for watching too you know why would you why would you why would you you know stop 
or why would you why would you swap if you're watching right and you've and you've watched for years there so that's what i'm saying the the end goal isn't necessarily to grab those people while it is good to grab them you can't your your plan can't be too focused on grabbing them um just more so getting the attention and waiting you really just have to wait when you're creating a streaming platform you just have to sit there and fucking wait like truly that's what you got to do and microsoft's perfect because microsoft is um i mean microsoft's fucking huge you know they have the they have the resources to just sit there and wait they do right they they could sit there and wait forever so that's what that's how i know Mixer has a very, very good, good chance to succeed because they have the resources to wait it out, and that's what that's what you need. That's what you need to build a streaming platform. You need to wait it out. You really, really do. I love how WoW raids are always shroud Q and A sessions. Well, anyone that's watching, it, either they care about WoW or they just want to listen to me talk. You know, those are the re those are really your only two options. When you watch me play WoW, either you care about WoW, or you just want, or you don't care and you just want to listen to me talk. So if you want to listen to me talk, you might as well try to ask questions, right? I don't know. It's the best time for me to reply. What's your current bit bit rate? Ten thousand. Is eight K Twitch max bit rate? Technically speaking, no. Technically speaking, Twitch's max bit rate that they offer is six thousand. That's technically their max, but, but some larger streamers take advantage of the fact that they actually could do 8,000. It's just not as stable, right? So you'll see like top content creators that do 8,000, but in reality, the cap is 6,000. You're not supposed to go over six. If you go over six, uh, it could get a little unstable, right? That's just like the the infrastructure that they have built over there. But most people do eight anyway. They say, fuck it, we're going to do eight. <laughs> do it till they tell you not to. Well, they won't tell you not to. They'll just tell you that it's not as stable. And that's all they'll say, you know. What What does that mean? I have no fucking clue. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah, I, I just think a lot of complaints on Mixer is just not being used to it. And all it takes is probably five minutes of your time to get used to it. But people don't have five minutes, you know what I mean? Because it's really, really simple. They try to dumb it down so hard for people. And somehow dumbing it down still doesn't get to their brains, right? It's just because they're impatient. They don't want to take the extra two minutes to learn, to figure it out. It literally would only take like two to five minutes to be like, oh, this works like this and this works like this. Oh, okay. You know, people come in with bad expectations and try to reinforce it. That makes sense, actually. I could see that. It's kind of just like the hate on that person on the, the council or whatever the fuck, right? People just start like stretching and they start to just like, poke and just poke at little things that truly don't really matter but because it's the topic of discussion and they're already feeling negative about it any little thing will kind of push that forward i think that's about anything anything's like that for sure i think one thing they could add is they could add a search bar like right here so instead of going browse and then searching, you can just be on the main page and just type it in over here. That could be an improvement. That would be something that would probably be beneficial instead of hitting browse and then typing it. But I don't know. That's about it, really. Everything else, everything else is great. When did you move to Mixer? I think seven months ago. I think it's been seven months. That's crazy. Seven months already. Holy shit. Yeah.